to be obeyed we want our leaders to obey laws and even to show us the, the lack of good faith they're appointing an audit of public debt usurping powers of the power powers of the auditor general so what we are saying in short after i don't want to i don't want to to to, to deliver this point i we i join people that have uh, spoken before me saying that talking stage is over i i want to join people that are saying that they can go ahead and talk on their behalf talk about their political interest and how threatened they are that now the youths are the, the youths are 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 um deplatforming them and they are taking the, the the they always felt that the ones that had the monopoly of calling street protests and they always felt like uh, Baba always felt like he, he was the custodian of calling us to the streets. Now he feels he needs to regroup with the political class. He can go ahead and do that. Baba has never been on our side. He is the same person who appointed Joho to be our lands minister. Had he won, we will not be different from this. So whether you voted for Baba or you voted for Ruto, this is not the time for us to blame each other. This is a time for us to regroup and say this that we want uh, to to um to hold uh, to, to 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 be on the right side of history to work together to ensure that the issues that we raised, uh, if they need a list that we can redraft for them, we write for them, we send for them, then they, they give us implementation matrices. We are not interested in any conversation because we've lived in this country, we've seen the reports before, have never been implemented, then ours is not going to be special. Thank you so much, Afro and Congress, for the good work you're doing for the nation. When we take over the country from this dispute someday, these loyal patriots that have stood by the side of the citizens, we are going to reward them in installments. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, uh, Abdul Rahim. Uh, guys, the hashtag is Ruto must go. Uh, see the Jumbotron. We are talking about Lewis Nguni, who is the comrade who is being held uh, by the Nanyuki DCI illegally. He has been detained. Guys, retweet that hashtag, retweet that tweet. Lewis, it's the one on the Jumbotron, by, written by Epiphany. If you are in a new key, please, let's visit that uh, police station and stand with them, stand with them, stand with him. So let's, so let's, show, let's show some love. Retweet, retweet. I'll pass the microphone to Steve Juma. Steve Juma, karibu kwenye mic. Yeah, Sante bro. Uh, good morning, all. Thank you. And uh, I'll share a couple of my views in, in regards to our country now i speak at the position of a kenyan journalist who have covered some of the issues that are now being addressed uh, but uh, kind of currently i'm 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 inactive with all doing other things now i was really shocked yesterday when former primer uh, came out to support that he, he 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 agrees to dialogue my first question was who is he when it comes to uh this revolution i believe uh raila molodinga and the all characters that uh, were in the same picture have been in this country for quite some time no. and uh, they have been um, they have been seeing Uh, somebody's talking. Joey, 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 please, I'll call upon you. Don't unmute your mic. Someone is speaking. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Sorry, Thank Steve. You. Thank you. Uh, these people have seen our challenges in the past. These people have been, they know the same, same issues we've been talking about. They all know them. What is dialogue at a time when people you want to dialogue with, people you want to interlock with, some of them are in custody some of them are in are in uh, remands fighting for what is genuine they were arrested some were killed there's no one talking about compensation compensation these are stories that you hear there and here what are you compensating for a life lost some are still maimed are in the hospitals people are their their, their, their parents that have died you remember the previous campaigns, pre previous protest. Everyone, majority of us was the, uh, supporting Raila's uh, mandamanos. People were killed. What happened less, later? Raila's daughter given some job. Kalonzo's son given some job. 
at whose interest so we've gone on the streets in the uh, before these people raila is is doing business with us and i will say that unapologetically raila has been doing business with us and now leave us alone we didn't tell you we didn't invite you on matters of millennials and gen z's we've been asking you these things why are you going behind the curtain and purport to be representing us we don't need your services now sit back relax let us now do it the, our own way this morning i've seen some leaders i don't know whether they are leaders or they are some crook somewhere called pocot leaders now cursing those who are funding peaceful protest i don't understand and with a lot of respect i've read history of kenya i've not seen anywhere where pokot took uh, front stage in 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 defending this country history might judge me differently but i will say they have their own problem they should cast the castle rasters we are not in the business of buying firearms and selling them so they should keep off if they cannot say anything i know cowards have ways of coming on front right to redeem themselves we don't want to listen to such voices. Let us shut our ears from those nonsensical uh, debates of who, pro who fun funds the protest or do what. We are in peaceful protest. Furthermore, I know there are lawyers here. I know there are the, the, the legal minds here. I don't think it's a crime even if you were to fund a peaceful protest because you are not funding them with firearm. You are just supporting their logistics. A peaceful protest i saw another character called farah malim who purports to be speaking on behalf of kenyan children or speaking for for president that guy and i will end it that the guy share the same ide ideologies with the al-shabaab moving forward we've had people talking about bad governance why resources are not getting on the ground please there's a bill that has been passed or yet to be passed conflict of interest that thing should be down as soon as tomorrow let me tell you what happens i've worked closely with these governments county governments you people wonder why there are pending bills you people wonder why uh, someone is not paid why there are no jobs in these counties do you know what happened some of these leaders are installed i've had a brother of mine here saying that you see a uh, president is friend to murkomen murkomen is friend yes you are right some of these leaders are installed well we will vote for who and who but they are finances who have stolen i will tell you when now um, you saw what happened when raila uh, got much support sometimes back uh, and you could see mara mount kenya businessmen supporting raila you could see all those things that were, pet were happening at capitol hills and we, we i don't know you call it sanitization process all that thing that will happen there people are defending their interest people have done crude things so the only way to remain afloat is to ensure that whoever takes power doesn't interfere with them and that is why they install leaders to these positions you will never be paid these people install these people in offices in order even to get further business mutu anambia governor and i'm happy governor wavinya was here kwamba eh mimi nitakupatia gari magari zako zote mimi nitawekwa mafuta wakati ya campaign and uh, he's not asking for anything at that particular time mwingine pia anamwambia pale sorry i don't know whether that is an alarm for me or what yeah 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 be landing 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 points kindly uh, give me a minute so these people will always uh go back to the governors they have installed the mcs they have installed 
the president they have installed and demand back their monies. And you will find a governor sitting in an office paying the debt that he owes people. Tulileta speaker kwa nini yako. Kijana yangu ndiyo huyu ule amesoma patee kazi ya CC, pay chief officers. You will never see all those things. Now, because uh, I think my, my time is limited, all I can say, let us continue with this debate and let now reach down to people who cannot access uh, internet services because ni story za jaba wakina wale wanasema anaweka wifi hakuna wifi popote Kenya so let's reach out to people who cannot access this social media platform or these spaces let's share these ideologies let's uh, maintain the momentum and let us not allow any old guard or old boys ahead of us revolution is on we will go and we reach to our final destination thank you and uh, and i wish you all the best thank you thank you so much uh, once again guys uh, the the tweet on the jumbo troll here on the nest guys we are over a thousand in this group we have less than 10 retweets so we're trying to get lewis out of prison a fellow comrade guys let us all retweet that tweet let us put some noise they have to free him he's being detained illegally let's make some noise for that anyway passing the microphone to elijah karibu kwenye mic comrade opposition asante asante afrocentric i was actually about to call you pale in my tent i usually drop when you call my name i don't know why um that said i just want to echo the words of my brother six thousand um actually i want us to talk more of uh, our thursday and tuesdays because you remember what you have been doing lately we seem kind of deviating from our you know uh, our cause and that's why you can see more comment everywhere going to this station going to that station because they know that we are kind of losing focus but uh of course i understand the bigger pictures uh, that you're talking about but, but again i will see that can we kindly close uh, to that bridge when we get there for now can we kindly talk more of our uh, you know our tuesday does the demonstrations because actually after what they did yesterday i was actually expecting us to talk more of sending strong signal to them tomorrow so that he, you know they can understand that we are not where they are because they know our issues why do we dare not why do we dialogue with? Actually, after that, I sent Baba a message telling him that, look, we have been respecting your stand, but now I, I think you don't know what you're doing. These are our demands in case you didn't have them. And actually, I shared some of them or, because what you have been sharing, I shared via WhatsApp and I saw the message. So I, I think after that, actually, I saw the this Philip Itele having space, trying to sanitize Baba. You know, Baba was not for that, you know, you know, and all that. And then I realized that Baba, you know, realized he messed up and then he's trying to send people to come. And so what I'm saying is that, guys, what we were doing, actually, it had more power. Because these guys, they are kind of afraid of us when you go to the streets. Can you kind of talk more of going to the streets? Because that's what the message that they understand. By doing so, we'll be having something, you know, showing them our demands. That's, guys, we need so and so to, you know, to resign. We need you to dissolve the cabinet. We don't need CDF. Because that's where the problem is. I shall see this and this and again and again. The problem also that we have, the reason why we do have legislation in this country is because the MPs, they have CDF. And they know that the, the, you know, the bribe people, the bribe primary teachers, uh, the bribe sub chief, the bribe chiefs, now only took on us out of out, we can't be heard because they want to nyamazisha. So what I'm saying is that can we push more of these things? Because I'm, I'm telling you for free that if today CDF we met our mbunge tutakuwa tumewatoa nguvu kabisa hawatakuwa na pools because they have nothing to blackmail us they have nothing so the money that they're getting guys is a lot of billions i was doing my calculations yesterday uh, after knowing that also the, the women rep they have basari president have basari you know that, that, that's accounts to how many billions almost 80 billions that man can be channeled to our high schools and then education in a poor free why do we need cdf for so guys, can we kindly, you know, talk more of going to the street again? We can still say, guys, on Thursdays, to talk to the street, this is the only language that the people want to understand. The guy is turning blacker. 
black, black, because you know, he has no power. Guys, let us talk more of Thursday and Tuesdays. I think that will help us. Because wow, to kid hapa hivi kwa online uh watu ni wakora, I really so they are happy. Me, I'm ready. I usually should leave my I have two sons. I should leave them here and tell my their mother, you know, guys, if I come, fine. If I don't come, tell my my boys that you know I was fighting for better Kenya. You guys, I was fighting for better Kenya. So I'm disappointed to see uh, us now. We are not talking of Tuesday and Thursdays. Guys, let us talk more of this because this is what we want. They know what we want. We want them to dissolve the cabinet. We want them to disband the CBA. We want them to do, you know, we don't want the political appointees because that's where the problem is. So guys, let us focus. Let us fight. Let us fight for what is rightfully ours. Can we kindly see if tomorrow we'll be having this thing? If you guys agree. So kindly let us talk more of tomorrow our you know our demonstrations. Our to to me were this your but now we are kind of talking more of kwa online. This depending online sana. So thank you guys for giving the platform. Let us focus more on our demonstrations. Believe you me, you are going to win this thing. Thank you very much for the mic. Thank you so much, Elijah. Great emphasis there on Tuesdays. IBC Tuesdays and Ruto Thursdays. Guys, remember, remember, every Thursday we are out on the streets to now occupy everywhere here Tuesday. So, guys, cash us boy to toko apa, encouraging everyone, let's get out. Let's bring the nation to a standstill. We must have good governance. We must have the country that we deserve. Uh, let me give the microphone to Generation Z. Johnny Canty, are you there? John Canty. Yes, good morning, good morning, everybody. Good morning, criminals. Good morning, uh, my fellow uh, Uber uh, guys. Good morning. Now, um, are you getting me afro? Yes, we are. Yes, we are. Good. Uh, let me start by clarifying some few things here. As Gen Z, uh, we are actually partless, leaderless, faceless. We are actually fearless. Why do we say all these things? Fearless, formless, faceless. You know, the government, or to be specific, Ruto, understands the politics of the day. He understands that putting us into normal structures, it will define us. When we are defined by normal structures of leadership here and there, all of us will be weakened. We will be weak. But when we are leaderless, we are actually, like every one of us is a leader, we are being united by an idea, an idea whose time has come. The ideas that we have is what actually drives us is our propelling force, is the leader behind us. So, like you remember, rejecting the finance bill was our leader the last time we were in the streets. Today, as we speak, we must actually remain leaderless, but identify those ideas. Ideas that are going to unite us, ideas that we are going to push forward. What ideas do we want? Right now, guys, people might think that we've lost focus, but we have not. When you see a ram going backwards, you may think it is fearing, but it is coming back to hit you. So when we are retreating, <laughs> we are not surrendering. We are saying no retreat, no surrender. We are formless. Some speakers have spoken about being, uh, probably they can be taken down. They can be killed. They can be maimed. Afro yourself, you've actually said that uh, this thing must continue, whether you are there, you are not. We don't have leaders. And as much as we say that we are united by an idea, any person who goes down by any chance, uh, by, by, uh, if they go down, another one pops up. So we are here and we are going to achieve what we want to achieve because right now our ideas should be how to bring down 
this government step by step. How do we do this? First of all, I want to say <laughs> thank you very much. Yesterday, President Ruto signed that IBC uh, bill. Right now, we are going to get IBC in place. It is through IBC that we can be able to actually recall those years and peace. The people who are supposed to represent us who are representing Ruto and his interest. We can actually start by making the king remain naked. If we let we leave Ruto naked without people surrounding him, supporting him, as we recall, we replace. We recall, we replace. We will change these uh, the laws pole pole until we are there. How are we gonna do this? We're gonna do this before 2027. It is achievable, guys. It's just that we have to remain focused. We we are saying that we are tribeless. That is what is uniting Anand youth to rise up against bad government uh, uh, governance by Governor Sir. It is the same thing that is uniting the youth. Somebody please put off your mic. It is the same thing that is uniting Washington youth to stand against the Finland scandal. You know, the, the leadership in this country is rotten, both in opposition and in the, in the government, to the extent that I cannot see one good leader who can stand when this thing sweeps everyone down the, the, the ocean. I want us to say this, and I'm very particular. If we remain tribeless, people are going to see the leaders for who they are. If you remain tribeless, you are going to see that when Raila Odinga uh, goes and uh, uh, and shakes the hands of Moi, goes and shakes the hand of Kibaki, goes and shakes the hand of Uhuru, goes and shakes the hand of Ruto, and then what are they fighting for? Look at, for example, uh, Homer Bay Town MP, Peter Kaluma. What is he tweeting right now? He's speaking, he's actually postulating how Ruto is supposed, because they have talked with Raila, how he's supposed to change this government and involve more people in this government, uh, give them positions from opposition and all that. Give me a minute. So please guys, let us be united by the idea. Let us press on. When we press on, let me tell you guys, I have enough intelligence to tell me that the police are getting fed up. The army is actually fed up. Everybody, the, 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 the security apparatus is using are already fed up. At the right time, today, if you went to the streets, only some few excited uh, uh, cop killers can actually go there and try to, do, uh, to, 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 to shoot. Right now, the police are actually getting it into their head that what we are doing we are fighting for them we are fighting for everybody we are fighting for a better future and today if we go to the streets they are going to protect us the the, the army will not shoot you when you are not armed so let us do our thing let us pressure we cannot stay still while people like in linturi are still in office we cannot stay still while people like Murukom and I are still telling us that they are, they are, they are wearing a watch worth 900,000. What, what shit is that, by the way? Guys, we cannot sit still while Nakumincha here is unqualified and cannot actually pay interns, people who have gone to, to school. We cannot stay still. We are going on to press on. We are going to bring this country to a standstill. We are not going to destroy. We are going to be peaceful, but we are going to occupy and stop everything from moving. Let's see how long the president will hold on. Let us see how long he can be able to persevere and watch us as we bring this country to a standstill. Don't steal, don't uh, destroy property because those are properties of our parents, those are properties of, of our own relatives and friends. They are our own properties. Let us occupy the streets. You don't have to go to state house. You don't have to go to parliament so that they can have an excuse to shoot you because it's a protected area. Let's occupy Nairobi. We stop even a full day of movement in Thika Road. I'm telling you guys, business 
Everybody is going to turn against this government. The business community is going to be fed up. Everybody is going to be fed up. And after that, Ruto must go. Thank you very much, Efro. Perfect, perfect submission. Ruto must go, Ruto must go. Occupy streets everywhere. I'm aligned with that call. Uh, Grace, are you finally on the microphone? Can you hear yes, us? Yes, yes. Go ahead. Yeah, thank you for for your submissions, and I thank you for the good work you've been doing. I know it's not easy, but we we have to work together. First, I want to point out that we we should stop blaming each other. Kama mtu amekosa, akwe corrected, we move forward. We should not allow our leaders to divide us at this particular moment that we want the best for our nation. We should not allow anybody to divide us. That is number one. Number two, I'm not hearing anybody say occupy City Hall. You know, we cannot play with Nairobi. Nairobi is the capital city. Nairobi is where businesses go go on than any other county. This is the county that collects collects the highest revenue in Kenya. This is the county also that carries the largest population in Kenya. So I want to hear those things you those things you are complaining about. Sakaja must go. Let us retweet it. Sakaja must go. Let us uh, occupy City Hall. Sakaja must go. Let us occupy each and every county where we want those leaders out. Because there is a big problem. We cannot have a situation whereby money is being stolen from the from the national government and the small money that has remained to the county also is stolen. So what remains for the common manangi? And even yesterday, I got an opportunity to, to speak to a politician. They are not happy with whatever we are doing. I want to tell you for free, they are not happy. Because the ones that are there, they have formed a system whereby they are dealing with a system of stealing and stealing and stealing. And that is one thing we cannot allow. So we have to get the strategies. Number one strategy, we have to mobilize. Personally, I've even started mobilizing people to take uh, votes. Because we are not going to wait for 2027. We are doing it now. It's now or never. So we are going to let us start educating people on the importance of taking votes, of taking the ID, and especially the youth, because we carry the largest population. So if we decide that this is what we want, we will get what we want. Now, that is number one. Number two, ongeni na parents, ongeni na watu when you are na nyinyi, to stop, don't give those politician platform to speak to people. They have nothing to say to us. So I don't understand why people are still listening to people like Murkomen. Me, I don't even listen. In fact, when I saw that on television that people are trying to, uh, he's trying to speak to people, I did not even switch my TV on to listen. I don't want to listen to him. I don't want to. I want him out of the office, nothing, nothing more. So strategy number one, we've said that the IBC have been constituted. So what do we do right now? The next way forward is to recall MPs that we don't want so that we shake this government. And I tell you, if we recall even four MPs and they have gone home, this government will know that we are not joking with them. Because the next it will be Ruto must go. I don't know why people are talking of 2027. For what? These people should fucking leave those offices. They are not working, so they should leave. So we should have, let us mobilize right now and ask people to go. When you are going to have an ID size and then we want to recall those MPs so that they go home. Secondly, we want to occupy every, every ministry, every county that is not, we are feeling they are not doing a good job. Starting with Nairobi, we have to occupy those places and tell them we don't like what they're what they doing and we don't want them in office. Last but not least, like I said, we should be talking to people. Engage also your parents because I had even a, that politician talking yesterday and it was like, to our mama, season the MCAs to cocoa ground, season your MPs to cocoa ground. Now, now, ho, we can divide you people, and that is not that is not what you want. So we should also find a way we have to make a movement where we talk to each and every person, educate 
each and every person so that we have a good strategy of pushing this government out of office. Lastly, I want to speak to the youths. We have this power and we have energy. If we can even, uh, we can stand in the streets there the whole day, it means we have energy. These people don't have energy. Our Zewana energy, the kind of energy we have. And we don't know how powerful we are. We have the numbers and we have uh, the, 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 the energy that we need. Let us use our energy to fight for what we want for our people. Let us use our energy to occupy everywhere. I was so disappointed yesterday. I didn't see anybody in the street. We should have a purpose and we should finish whatever we started. Ruto must go. That is the motto. He is leaving. Not any time, not 2027, now. Thank you. Thank you so much, guys. Guys, Ruto must go. That is a clarion call. Uh, the Jambotron, Free Lewis, guys, we, in terms of difficulty, we don't remember the words of our enemies. It's the silence of our friends that hurts the most. The silence of comrades. Please do not be complacent. Do not be silent. Retweet that our friend, comrade Lewis Nguni can be released. He was abducted and is being held in a new key. Uh, we have a thousand people on these spaces and the retweets are just a hundred. That means 900 of us are being complacent. Please let's not be complacent with the injustice in this country. Let's make some noise. It's simple. Let's retweet and maybe we'll be able to get Lewis some freedom, get his freedom back. These are just basic, basic uh, values enshrined in our constitution that are being violated by this illegitimate regime. regime. And that's why we are saying Ruto must go. Vivian, karibu kwenye mic. Mic niyako. Asante sana. Asante sana. Uh, good morning, Patriots. My name is Vivian. I am from Kisumu County, Afrocentric. This is the second time I am speaking on your space. And thank you so much for the opportunity. Uh, my thoughts. The things that we have experienced in this country, I am not a Gen Z, as I keep on saying. I am a Gen X. And I also participated in the, in the uh, public participation for the constitution when it started. I was a college student then. I have basically been in every possible uh, protest that has happened in this country, specifically within Kisumu. In 2017, the second round of voting, we rallied doctors within Kisumu County and nurses to provide uh, services for people who are going through uh, police brutality uh, over a period of 10 days. We have seen this government work. We have seen these people work. We have seen this group of politicians work. I don't want to call them leaders because they are ceased to be leaders. They have lost the vision of what they were fighting for. So three things that I would want to bring to light. One, this corruption is not just in the national government. This corruption is everywhere. If you have sat in the county government's um, a preparation for any important meeting in your region of county government, you will realize two things. One is that all the events are supported by stakeholders while they have budgets that are run to do those things. So where does that money go? That is one thing that we have to ask ourselves. Number two, if you sit with people who work in this government, the county governments, whether the national government or where it is, with this if news, these people usually, usually, at all ends and odds, have two books of accounts. The if news does not work as it should they have parallel accounting systems, which means that what is reported in your IFMIS that is given to Auditor General and what is actually paid out through other forms is not the same. Ask any contractor, ask any person who is doing business with the county government or with the national government, they will tell you that. Number three, we have had so many commissions, so many 
In fact, me, if somebody tells me about dialogue with the government, I don't want to hear. If somebody tells me do business with the government, I don't want to hear. Why? Because those are time buying tactics that will not lead us anywhere. They are trying to pacify the movement. They are trying to reduce the anger that the that Kenyans are having right now. And if we relent even one inch, it is going to bring us so many things in place. Ruto says that he, he is not uh, uh, into extrajudicial killings. The children that are being killed right now, the ones that are found in dams, the ones that are found in rivers, who is doing that? It is his government. I would like us to stay steadfast. I would like us to fight for this country. This country is for all of us. It is not for Luo even though I am a Luo. It is not for Kikuyu, even though I am a Kikuyu. And the only language these people understand is the language of peaceful protest in those streets. They don't know what to do with this. They don't know. They have no clue. They are torn deaf. They are listening, but not understanding. And the more we push and push and push, that is when we get to where we are. It beats me how civic education is not part of our education system. People should know about the Constitution. People should know what it takes for you to be jailed for certain crimes. People should know what their rights are. How do you think our police and our Tumishi kwa, 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 kwa Uma keep on? They keep on, especially people from Vito Bolivini. They keep on taking advantage of those people. Why? Because our people are not educated, our people are not are not aware of the role. So I am supporting anybody who is saying that we have to bring civil education to the villages. We have to bring it to our wards. We have to bring it to the spaces where we sit. We have to bring it to our bars. We have to bring it to our uh, our entertainment spots. Talk about these things. Let us educate each other and let us stand up for each other. Those are my submissions. Thank you so much and keep on fighting, Patrick. Thank you very much, Vivian. That was brilliant. Um, my name is Nkirote. I have been on the co host section. I didn't say anything much for now. Let's give our speakers an opportunity to air their points. Okay, who's the next person? We have Nobaham, are you there? Yes, I am here. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you for giving me this chance. Um, I'm having a little flu, so my voice is not clear. I hope uh, you can hear me. Uh, yes, so yes. I will just, yeah, I'll just go through some few points. Um, uh, it's good that we have the same ideas because some of the things that I have noted have already been mentioned, so I will not waste a lot of time on them. Uh, but one thing is clear at this stage is that uh, the politicians have said there are only two options. We either be silent as Kenyans while they emerge on our taxes. Uh, the other option is they will take the country to the docks. So it is clear since we have started this conversation that this is their um, position. And uh, they are not relenting or they don't care. So because what we are actually asking at this stage is not uh something that is not doable we are just saying please uh be accountable uh get rid of these co incompetent people and get you know people who are competent and people who are learned and i see this as not a big thing for them but as it stands um they have said that Seems like Nobaham is lost. Who can hear him? Uh, we can't hear him. All right, sorry for that. We'll probably jump to the next speaker for now as we hit as we wait for him. Oh. So okay, okay. Go on. Can you hear me now? Please, sorry. Yes. You can, yes. you can. Sure, go on. Okay, thank you, thank you. Um, 
So uh, my second point is um, on uh, all we are asking is that the system to work for Kenyans and not for the politicians and their cronies. You know, it's no longer about the Luos, the Kikuyus, the Kales, the Somalis, Muslims and Christians. No, what you are saying is, please uh, put in systems that work for everyone. You know, these guys, they steal our money and then they act as demigods in front of our parents. Our parents are scared. They think that if the CDF doesn't come through, then they are doomed. But that's not the reality. If you have systems that work, we will not even need these politicians because everybody will be able to get the, the things he needs on his own way. So we really need to do civic education at the ground. Kwanza ushago, lazima kila mutu arudu kwao. And then he should educate their villages on how we are planning uh, things to change for Kenya. It's no longer the same. It's no longer about them. Now it's about Kenyans. And then... I think... I think he's getting calls that are interrupting him. So we can go to the next speaker. Oh my god. Anyway. No bomb, you can land. You can land if you're back. You can land your point. Where Rudy? Yeah, Nico, Nico, I don't know why I'm getting lost. So let me just finish because I think my internet is not strong or something is wrong with my phone or I am being, I don't know, uh, the bit of challenges I think with the internet these days and uh, some other outside factors also. So I will just say that uh, we should read about what's happening in Burkina Faso. Every one of us should read and see what's happening there. The leader there said, okay, we're no longer buying any vehicles. We are no longer, you know, working for the West. We are working for our people. And they looked at themselves and said, what is their strength? They have seen their strength is in farming, their strength in their minings, but they do this locally. They're no longer transporting their raw materials outside the country. They call whoever is trying to work with them to come and do their work within the country so that they are able to export and not you know, import everything. What we are doing in Kenya is we are, we are importing everything and then our raw materials are being exported and, and sold back to us at a very expo expensive price. And we don't see how good Kenya is. Kenya can feed the whole of Africa if we have good planners and if you have the right, um, you know, things and the right plants. And uh, the last one is on um, the way forward. My I say the way forward is uh, we start, once IEBC is in, we will start recalling our MPs. That's where we start. And we, once we call an MP, we replace him with idea-based politicians, hand-picked solely by us as the youth, because we are tired. We are tired doing the same thing and expecting different results. That it's not working. We, 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 have been in, we have been having a dependence over 65 years and things are still the same. So other than that, we have to put pressure to this government to change. Look, they are discussing about things that are not even in the discussions. These guys cannot even read the room. We are not talking about dialogues. We are just saying, please, you have already messed for the last two years. Now going forward, can you unmess your mess? Can you do the right thing now? But they are deaf, they are dumb, they don't give a shit. Actually, the more we talk about the ideas, the prouder they get. The more they, you know, I don't even understand what's happening. Are we talking to people who don't understand? Our, our, our point is not clear. Are we dealing with mad people? Me, I don't understand. I don't understand because uh, if you give an instruction to my one-year-old daughter, she understands what I'm saying, but I'm, I don't, I'm not able to get what's happening with our president and the people who are around him, his advisors. It's like they don't have ears. So guys, thank you very much. I will not take more, much of your time and uh, sorry about my voice. And thank you very much, Afro, and uh, the other lady for giving me the chance. Thank you. You're welcome. I agree with Nobaham because of course we are dealing with mad people 
these are mad people for one they are incompetent number two they are immoral number three they lack humanity of course these are mad people we don't have any sane person who would uh slain the other human for standing up for the, for for their rights um so uh, allow, allow i think it to, would be allow me to just add one yes? more thing allow me to add just one more thing the fact that they have not mentioned right. the people killed in all their press conferences people have died kenyans have been killed they are not even saying one single sorry what does that mean to us that i think is another point we need to talk about a lot our brothers have been killed our brothers are being abducted it will be me tomorrow it could be you tomorrow what does that tell us about these people how comes the discussion is about dialogue is about you know commissions what are these commissions we're already saying we have plotted expenditure but they're all talking about commissions new people i don't know i don't understand really thank you all right let's go to ken ken are you there yeah i'm there hi okay um, uh -huh. Thank you so much, uh, Afron Kirote. So I'm just going to pick up from where you you left, uh, and Kirote, you you are saying something about the the, the kind of people we are dealing with, and. Um, interestingly i've come across um as some tweet from the standard ktn uh kirinyaga leaders wanting the mount kenya region to unite under one political party ahead of 2027 now i think these people really do not get us huh? they seem not to understand we are past this try best politics the current dynamics are totally different but they are still insisting on how ah, we need uh, political parties tribal political parties before 2027 now i'll begin by first expressing my <clears throat> dissatisfaction and um, disappointment in raila i've been campaigning for raila and uh, voting for him for the longest time now but uh, i'm disappointed because he proved people like miguna right uh, people who've been on his back calling him conman conman so he's basically proven them right now why why don't we want dialogue with the government i'm just i'll i'll try to be as straightforward as possible and as brief as as brief as possible um <clears throat> well i came across some tweet last week uh saying that uh, ntsa the national transport uh, safety authority cannot account for 1.2 billion shillings the next day i came across another tweet uh, saying that um, nhif cannot account for almost 8 point something billion shillings today morning <clears throat> i came across some tweet uh, saying that the government cannot account for 1.2 trillion borrowed between 2010 and 2021 now we need to give some important context of course a significant number of that money was borrowed during uh, the jubilee government and of course we know the current president was part and parcel of that government so we cannot we can we can we we must um, we we can't say that he wasn't part of that government he is part of the rest of the burden that they imposed on us so we are not going to <laughs> we are not going to dialogue if if you as a president need to dialogue with people to be reminded of what you need to do as a pres president then you do not deserve to be a president you don't deserve you um if i'm for example if i'm an architect i cannot be relying on clients to tell me what to do a client will basically give me a simple uh, concept and i'm the one who will execute the concept i do not need to come to the client and get every bit of information about what to do so that's something i think crucial needs to understand if you cannot do your work as a president then i think you just need to quit uh, you need to um fuck off in other words um <clears throat> secondly you've killed more than 30 people and i'm saying you've killed because ultimately the the buck stops with the president you're in charge of the state and the state includes the state machinery the police the intelligence the military so 
you've you've basically murdered you've essentially murdered more than 30 young people i i was seeing clips from uh, david shege's uh, funeral yesterday for context the, david shege was the first kenyan to be murdered uh, outside parliament the 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 one who was shot um, on the head by a sniper so <clears throat> why 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 do we need to dialogue with people who who've basically killed part some of us for asking for something right we are not asking for anything significant to Nambia we need accountability we need good governance then you want to kill us then you come and say oh let's dialogue what are we dialoguing we are not talking about, we we cannot talk to people who believe that killing people using force to suppress others voices is the best way to go about uh, the issues we are raising so um i think we need to we need to we need to get out of this dialogue first our um, our our demands are simple and straightforward and as a president i think ruto knows what we want we want good governance we want accountability and we need justice for those that have been killed so let's not relent uh let's uh gain as much energy as we can and let's push forward with the movement thank you great to hear from you ken uh -huh. we are relentless we are not giving up any time i want to give you a reminder that I came across upper what when you your history. Uh, I hope you know this that Ruto became involved in politics in 1992 when they were doing the run up to the general elections. Yeah, now Alice idea who found uh youth youth in any the youth for Kanu in 1992 that group. It was supporting the presidential candidacy, Eanani Emoi. Aha, I thought you should know. On to the next person. Who is that? I prefer him to come on as I know I'm Kono so that it's easier for me to see you. I give the mic to. De jure, is it de jure? Over to you. Okay. Good morning, fellas. How are you? Good morning to you guys. How are you? Am I audible? Sure, you may go on. Okay. Now my my few points. I want us to appreciate first of all and thank God for exposing what we've always suspected, the opposition, the so-called opposition. That is what we call controlled opposition. And now when we look at it critically, we need to appreciate and format our conscience to realize that these are capitalists and capitalist buccaneers. Why do I call them capitalist buccaneers? These are a few people who are gatekeepers for the exploiters. The World Bank, the IMF, all those Britain Hood institutions, you know, the, the, the NATOs and all those uh, client states. So now you need to know that what we are fighting is a force bigger than just the local political players and the, they've been unmasked. So now what next, what to do? What to do, first of all, we need to understand how capitalism operates, and especially in times like this. What happens when capitalism is threatened? Capitalism will always use force, and that's why you see the state machinery, you know, capturing people, torturing people, basically to sell fear. And then capitalism will also use its money to buy, and capitalism will use propaganda. So basically what we need to do, we need to be more united than ever right now at this point. And then we need to speak to our people and sensitize them on exactly what is happening. Then thirdly, we need to question ourselves as we formulate strategies. We know peaceful protest is a good strategy and it's a marathon 
peaceful protest will take time. They'll try to kill you over and over until when they're drenched in blood, maybe that's when they'll give up. But usually they'll try to bring in a puppet to infiltrate who will take over and reformat the system back to factory settings, which is back to, to, to the original capitalism. So we need now to go to have a team that goes down and studies to get to understand the history of the conflict between the people and the capitalists. And historically, this conflict has only taken context in the backdrop of the socialists or the communists as a populace fighting against capitalist stooges who are being propelled and controlled by external forces. So now we need to go back, get to study the ideology, because we know the synthesis. We know, I mean, we know the, the thesis, which is capitalism. We need an antithesis, which is counter-capitalism, to come up with a synthesis, which is a state that is desirable post-capitalism or post this exploitation. Now, I look at a few examples. When you see now these uh, state people are talking about, uh, about uh, of late you've had the, the, the term uh, uh, silent majority. That's a word they picked up from Uganda during the conflict, uh, I mean, the campaigns between Bobby Wine and uh, I'm 72, two, three, I mean, uh, uh, the past election. So basically that's a propaganda tool, is to instill fear, to try and tell you like they have numbers. And then again, when you look at a thing like the ID, that again was borrowed from Uganda. In Uganda is where people renew IDs. And this can be a tactic used to disenfranchise the population, the youth, because they know we are many, and they know if we all get the voters' uh, rights, we get the ID cards, we can easily get them off, or we can give them a, a run for their money, even though they will eventually want to manipulate uh, the system. That's why those servers are placed in capitalistic states or the prior states. So you need to understand the whole system is rigged. So for us, we need to have an ideology that mirrors the counter-capitalism. I don't know if many understand the study of uh, the ideological uh, study of uh, capitalism, I mean of uh, communism, but communism has proved to counter the propaganda of capitalism better. Communism has been used to rally the masses into units, concrete units that resist the penetration and the propaganda of capitalism. So as you, as you stated, as most stated that we need to go back to our people, to our communes, basically, or what the Israelis will call the kibbutz, going back to our communities and educating them, basically you're walking that walk. So I want us to go back and study and understand what capitalism is and come up with an ideology, practical uh, solutions, that we need to begin implementing. A good example, again, I'll give you. When uh, Fidel and his team were countering uh, the, the, the dictatorship in Cuba, when they were in Sierra Maestra and all those uh, the jungles, they still went and treated the poor people in the rural areas. And so what we have, basically what uh, the Dr. Japrado was organizing, is also one of the moves because you realize that the population, our people, have been denied deliberately health services. So we need now to move. As we move to educate our people, let it not only be words. Let's also move some of these services closer to them. And it is very easy because we are many. And us being many, we are wealthy in numbers. If each one of us can contribute just about 100 bob or 200 bob. And if the, the, the medical front, the medical corps, the ones under Japrado and the, and the, and the likes of uh, Hanifa, 
we can organize. We can go down there. We can organize the logistics as we sell our ideology on the impending change that we need. We also have a practical movement, be it in health, be it in social education, be it in civic education. And that way, we slowly by slowly, you'll realize that we'll be building a counter system that goes against the current system. Because now the hospitals are just shells. If you go to classrooms, basically they're more or less like shells. There's nothing working. So we need to look at, 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 at this struggle from an economic, a social, and an ideological front. That is my submission. Thank you. Thank you very much, D. Um, I totally agree with you that yeah, we still need to to dig more information so that we know what exactly we are fighting against. Tunajua most of us uh personally I'm in the village and I can tell you for free so many youths they don't really have an idea of what's going on. Na hata ile siku ya demos atoki waliza kwa nini wametokea they they didn't have an idea they would tell you I was collecting views they would tell you your finance bill yangushwe and it worked anyway. Uh so I think they need our influence apa tumeanza like a movement we shall be trying to do ground sensitization uh, civil education trying to explain to our parents anyone you come across unajaribu kumwambia what's going on um but uh, again there are challenges we have people you know there is still masculinity there's still chauvinism in our communities kama mimi karibu ni chapwe siku ingine karibu ni chapwe i was really harassed for trying to explain about finance bill so it's not a easy course but i believe if we do it collectively we shall conquer okay so, so basically just to address one thing just a minute when we're moving like in your in your case where people uh, exhibited some form of uh, male chauvinism now we need now this is what organization is called when we are in our communes we need to find like-minded youths and when you're moving we need to move with our scouts for example if you're moving to go and sensitize people on a bill you need to have like two, three, four, five comrades so that also your security and, and your, your propagation of the message is, is represented. You know, when you're in numbers, when you're two, three, four, five people, you're basically in like a, a military formation. The more the numbers, the better. So let's, let's, uh, let's find in our communes like-minded people. And when we move to sensitize people, we move as a number. And that way, even when one speaks of a certain issue, the other one can speak of a certain issue and the other on a certain issue. Thank you. Absolutely. We're going to try to do that. Um, next on the mic, we have K.O.T. Sonko. Are you there? Kirote, am I audible? Yes, you can go on. Okay. On, uh, first and foremost, I want to thank you, Kirote and Afro, for hosting this space. So, the question is, dialogue with the government. So, I just want to ask you a question. Uh, Karibia Mike, my... kukombali sana. Nikombali sana? Nisikia? Kukomafold. Okay, so I just want to, to to ask the listeners and the and the speakers who are on this space. How can you have a dialogue with a government that knows exactly the killer cop who shot dead Rex in cold blood? Yeah, yet they they, they are not going after that cop. They are only going after the freedom fighters they're going after the peaceful protesters some of us are even living in fear 
uh, uh, wondering, is this a nation or is this the, 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 the you try to speak out, this same same government will try to silence you. And I'm, I'm really embarrassed by the, by the opposition because the opposition of this country they only prioritizes their stomach yeah whenever they come and speak uh for the interest of the of the of the citizens they do it perfectly but whenever they are called to the table with the government they'll still go there and eat with them satisfied they now forget the 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 citizens of this country and so that's one of the reasons why we as the gen z we don't want the dialogue because those people probably who will be on that table trying to dialogue with the with, with this with this rogue government they'll get paid and they'll uh, they'll be compromised so whenever uh, we the the, the the large group try to speak out they'll be used to come and 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 try to 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 calm us down so this time round i don't think if the dialogue can work because that dialogue is for self interest what we really need to do or what the government really needs to do we want them to okay we want to see the action like now we are saying that we have incompetent cabinet secretaries. They really need to, to be fired immediately. We are saying that uh, probably the head of state uh, need to go. He really needs to leave before 2027. Yeah? We are saying, uh, uh, we, we, saying that come 2027 or any, if, if we are going to have any, any general election soon, then most of the Gen Zs and the millennial, you people should not just come out to vote, but you also need to come out and contest for those uh, elective seats. Because I'm told uh, you are the only person who can bring the change you want to see. So we really need to come out in large numbers to vote when that time of voting comes. And also we really need to come out uh to to contest for these seats because if we are not going to contest for these seats then probably those people who have been in the government in the opposition from from early 980s early 90s they'll still come out and contest for those seats and because we'll have no other option but to vote for them then probably for the other next five years we are still going to suffer and will be we, we will be cursing ourselves on why we, 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 we elected such, such leaders. So at this point, we really need to, to show that we have the strength, we have the unity. You people, we need to come out and contest for these seats. Like we are saying we want to occupy the parliament like the other day. In the next general election, let's occupy those parliaments as the members of parliament. Yeah? Let's even occupy the, the, the executive as the, the, the cabinet secretaries. Because that change will only come if we move united and contest for these seats. Don't look at yourself like in Kirote, you, you, you are a very strong woman. Yeah? You can even go for governorship in Meru. You can go for women rep. You can go for member of parliament. Yeah? So, guys. We want to be positive and of course uh, when we call upon all the people to come out and have a peaceful protest kindly let us let us come out in large numbers in those streets personally I've been in the streets uh, whenever uh, whenever the peaceful protests have been held so guys I thank you for for for, for being united we are tribeless we are leaderless and we are fearless. Thank you so much, the host Afro and the co-host Kirote. Awesome. That was great from KOT. Um, if you've not uh, spoken, 
please raise your hand so that it will be easy for me to see you. Aha, uh -huh. Ayo, did you speak? Ayo, are you there? Am I clear? Yes, you are clear. Okay, we'll go with the next uh, speaker. Honorable Timothy, there you go. Okay, good morning. I hope all of you are fine. Okay, what I'll start with is uh, to spomka to tamshwa. Na to spojipanga to tapangwa. So why am I saying this? Yes, can you hear me? Am I audible? Yes, you are. You are. Okay. So, what we noticed yesterday at KCC is... All right. Can you hear Timothy? Yes, we <laughs> can. Yes, I can. Can you hear him? All right. Go on. So, okay. So, what we noticed yesterday at KCC is the political class are regrouping again. They want to divide us into what we are used to, to the tribalist groups. What they realized is the movement that we have currently, they are tribalist, they are leaderless, they are fearless. How can they infiltrate us? One thing is they'll bring Baba on board and then they work on like a united front. And the united front Basically, they just want to divide us. And that's why you realize, uh, for example, in Rift Valley, they'll start saying, oh, how an attacker could come to it to a job. For example, when uh, this medical inquiry was being impeached, was about to be impeached, sorry, what did the people of Meru do? They had a press conference. They started saying, um, to it, um, to it. So basically, what mostly kills us as a country is tribalism. And then here comes another younger generation who are not into that. They believe in good leadership. They believe in change and they want to bring change in our government, you see? And that's why they are, they are fearing because we, they know we will wipe them all out, starting with the president, Raila and all that, because they know the younger generation, they don't have a leader. So it's a matter of we want better leadership and this and this is what we want to do. See, when the president came to power, what I expected him to do was to cut the cost of running the government. But then what did he end up doing? He started creating non um, offices which are non-constitutional. And all these offices need funding. They need a budget. He increased the what renovations why would you renovate the state house and still renovate state lounges and you're never actually in the country you see such things another thing which i'm realizing currently people are struggling to get their ids you see and i'm foreseeing a scenario where they realize the younger generation are against us do you know the people who are currently in high school like almost all of them by come 2027 will be eligible to vote. And they graduate in like roughly, let's say 1.5 million, 1.5 million, 1.5 million. And for the Gen Z and millennials currently, we are over 18 million. You see? So I'm foreseeing a scenario where currently it's hard. It's hard for people to get their IDs for people actually who applied uh, for their IDs in Huduma Center, now it's becoming hard since January, they're not getting their IDs. I think they have foreseen a scenario where these younger generation are against us. So what should we do? They'll start stopping the processing of the IDs, just like they do for the passports. So that to reduce the numbers of younger generation that will vote against them. And which I don't think is a good idea. And I think as of now, I think we are losing the focus because we started really well. The pressure was on, the pressure was on. I believe if the pressure 
we had put the one when we started the demos by now i think ruto will be out because the nato nato countries for example is let's say that's something which you cannot deny he's the puppet of the west but then the west they believe in democracy and when they have someone who is the puppet doesn't believe in democracy it comes an issue so they seem like they are tainting their image so basically if we continue putting the pressure i don't think even the us will be willing to associate with him again so i must say i must say this is just the beginning of something great and uh we need to continue fighting we need to continue fighting we should not get tired because if we get tired and then we allow them to divide us in our tribal lines again trust me in future gen- in future or many years to come we'll be saying okay we are almost changing the leadership and changing the narrative of leadership in our country and we didn't do that it's upon me and you to bring the change then goes to another issue of education currently in kenya education is becoming expensive considering the new funding model and all that now actually i don't know how many parents will be able to afford education in kenya that's so wrong i don't know why they removed the previous funding model the this current uh, funding mob- model i can say sorry to say shit because i don't get the concept where education even in government universities will be expensive at some point even compared to private unis because now education now is heading to over 300k depending on the course that you are doing which i don't think is in order as a country they are killing dreams of younger people because for example like let's say ruto himself if he didn't get the education and this it was because of the funding model which was there it was easier for them to have education why deny others another chance an equal chance to pursue the education that's when i will say equity not equality you see and another point i've noted is this about the governors and all that currently there's a bill which i saw somehow somewhere a few months ago where someone was suggesting that the current governors are not allowed to vie as senators for a period of like five years uh what what i'm realizing or the trend that i'm noticing now is governors come into office then they loot the counties dry and then what do they do to protect themselves they decide let us vie us uh, as senators it will be hard for my fellow colleagues who are senators uh to start maybe the process of making me pay for all the corruption scandals she did for example one of the presidents i can say is this mandago mandago and i think someone ali roba i think ali roba was also a governor and now is a senator if i'm not wrong you see these people are using these positions to come and cover themselves and i think that's one thing this is a conversation which you should have where will you vie as a governor and then come down as a senator so it means you're coming to protect the wrongs that you did when you were in power the other day we saw the senators passed a bill which allows them to work with the government you know do you know what that means that means okay like i mean to work with the government in contract form so that means all the all the tenders an mp can give himself or herself the tender they won't be questioned you know currently they can do it but indirectly but now when that bill goes through and then the members of parliament also are the members of national assembly also pass it it means that also the mps will be uh, working with the government in forms of tenders openly without even hiding so see, these people are more of their interests their interests their interests you see that's why i say we must dry the swamp we must drain this swamp because most of the political class which you have today i can see what we are experiencing nowadays is as a result of what they did a few years ago considering now 
let's say for example those who are in KICC yesterday all the Kalonzos, the Railas, Ruto, Modavadi, all these people have been government for years, for years. You see, these people are still the one who have brought us here. And we are suffering as a result of what they did a few years and currently they are continuing doing. You see, so what I'd urge us as a generation, as citizens, we should remain united to see Kubali Kuganishwa. Because the moment you see they've brought Baba on board, this man is struggling with the legitimacy. Ruto is struggling. If you are a person who can study the, what can I call, the faces and all that, if you compare the face that Ruto had yesterday while he was talking compared to the one last year, you notice that this person are gonna stress, you see? So what does he do? He's struggling with legitimacy. So he'll bring someone on board and try to counter us which still they're still wondering how they can counter us that's why you can see shalin ruto like last week uh, he had meetings with the 47 what do you call them presidents of the student associations they are trying each and everything to counter us they don't know this is a young movement a younger generation movement citizens coming together they're not being funded they are asking for accountability they don't want anything to do with corruption and all that. Now they're wondering what will, how will they count us? They have never been there before. Just like, for example, COVID. So, you know, the first times of COVID, it also had people were living in fear. They didn't know what to do. But then the more we continued in that COVID phase, people started being comfortable. And they're like, oh, be there, neza pata ikitona, bado stakufa. I need to do this and this. Now, currently, as we speak, now we're in that phase where the government is, uh, is against a younger generation a united people who they don't know how to deal with them you see and if we we relax with time they'll continue dividing us with time because uh, mostly the governments i can say they prosper in divide and rule so if we don't if we don't continue uniting and continue injecting and pushing on they'll find a way to count us and that's where now we will end considering that 27 will be coming and then as a younger generation yeah you know we cannot we cannot continue pushing and fighting bad governance and then come to 27 we are not there so it's upon us to conduct the civic education to conduct all this stuff to ensure that all these people because for example now people are bitter are we can say they are hungry and angry they're bitter so it means people are willing to come in large numbers, come 2027, but as you know, Kenyans are forgetful. So if you don't keep the temple up, it means that these people will come and regain their, what can I say, their control. And then come 2027, it will be hard, we'll still be having the same, same issues that we're having currently. So we must remain tribeless, partyless, and fearless. For example, I saw people tweeting, uh, uh, you people want to Ruto to go and all this. Who are uh, the next generation of leaders? You should never worry about that. We have I many, even you as a youth, you can be the leader and bring change. We have the legs of Kiyom Tata. We have many people. So never at the, think of if you want Ruto to go, who will inherit? No, no, no. It's never like that. If you want change, you want it so bad. Every people can, like many people can, can step up. So you don't need, you don't need, I don't know, to worry at you, oh, if we do this, what will happen? No. When we start to bring change, we sweep everything. We sweep everything. We need the change that we, we, we want. So if we don't do that, definitely, Sijir to end up I don't, I always struggle, as a country which is struggling with the debt, where would you pay an MP a salary? And then also pay him a sitting allowance. What's his work? Honor. That's why I'm saying that I expected in order to deal with this the debt in Kenya, apart from now, they tax us. And then at the end of the day, we don't see the benefits of the tax that they are getting. For example, we had Finance, Finance Act 2023 because it was passed and then they act, enacted it. What are the profits or what are the benefits of that Finance, Finance Act 2023. 
nothing. All you can see right, left, and center is just looting, looting, looting. Corruption written all over. So these are the things that we must have as a conversation and uh, we must change these narratives. Currently, he has the, uh, the legislature. Our MPs have been turned into just voting machines. You see? So if, if we don't continue pressing on, these people will be get comfortable and then they'll have a strategy where they'll counter us and it will be done and dusted. We should never let that to happen. We shall still remain vigilant. Also don't get a point where this CDF, we have CDF, which the MPs portray that they give bursaries. And that's why even if we, we bring an agenda of they should scrap out this CDF, they'll always like go to the ground, how to attack a toy CDF, and this CDF is what we used to give them bursaries. You know, most people don't see the brighter future. If we scrap out this CDF, because every, every MP, I think, is given around 130 million. 130 million. If you count it to 290 uh, constituencies, and then the government also invests in education. So if you add this, all this, you pull it together, that means education in Kenya will be free. Why not take the CDS from the MP? Because this is what they are using as a corruption tool, CDF, nothing else. If you bring all this in a common pool, then it means our education in Kenya will be free. But then they wouldn't want that because this is what they use to campaign. This is what they use to, to fund their lavish lives. So there's this point where they are suggesting that, for example, school fees will be paid on e-learning. Ah, in e-citizen, sorry. E-citizen. Do they know that some of the parents, they, they don't pay school fees, they just take like firewood, they take, let's say, cereals, in order to pay for their school fees. You know, you are making it even more tough for people to access the education. You see, and that's so wrong. It should never be that. You cannot always keep on, the reason as to why you say you travel abroad, is because you are going to get jobs. Who told you that those people who are graduating in schools, they want to go and be employed abroad as house helps and all that? Who told you that? And then this person is encouraging brain drain. You can never tell me that the perfect brains you're taking them out there to go and develop other countries. How about your country? As a president, you should never encourage brain drain and that's what he's doing. This is a person who never had a plan is a person who rode on his campaigns on hatred. And uh, all this time, that's what he's using. He doesn't, he didn't have even a plan. Let's go to the other thing. I don't know why even Baba came. This man is a person who never learns. The class regime, he, he suffered because he was involved in the handshake. Now he's here coming to join hands with Ruto he will still suffer for the mess of this government. And come 2027, all of them, you should take them home. Hakuna aita kuwa tisijikila uchaguzi anakuja na lia hapa, ni meibiwa, ni meibiwa. People lose their lives because of him. Anaenda na negotiate for hapa na hapa. And then when he gets his deal, he forgets. For example, this Nadiko report was as a result of him uh, coming to dialogue with Ruto. Then who benefited? It's him. That's why now you see the government is funding for his AUC chair, uh, African Union chairman position. Corona. So we must stop all this. And your man on is so hard for them now to know how to counter us because we are leaderless. If we had leaders, it would have been easier for them to control us. But now they can't control us because we don't have leaders. Corona. So, my people, we must continue fighting as a nation. We must continue. Civic, edu civic education. For example, like in Lamu, there is something called Lamu Youth Assembly. You know I come from Lamu. So, this is a group of youths. They have another whole structure. They have cabinet secretaries, they have MPs, they have the president and all that. 
they conduct civic education. Now we must conduct this civic education, try to educate our people on the importance of good governance. Usitegeme handout. If an MP gives you 1,000 or the leaders give you 1,000, divide that into five years. Will the damage that will have caused compared to that 1,000 you received, is it worth it? Is it worth it? So we must conduct this civic education, right, left, and center. We must be at this. Let's do this. Join with your fellow youths. Get people who have the interest of the people at heart as your leaders. Educate our people. You know this, our older generation, they were in the process where they are like, okay, it's, it's so wrong to, uh, I don't know, as you you should respect your leaders. But then they are forgetting uh, your elders. They are forgetting here we are not at you are not respecting them. We are just demanding for accountability. Honor. So they have always lived in the fear. The leaders have always and the politicians have infiltrated fear to them. So it's also upon us to sky as a younger generation to say maybe we'll stand this way. It's also upon us to educate them and tell them this is the right way. If we do this and this, it's affecting us. Sisi kwa sisi. Come on, I doubt if they'll be on board with this government, even come to 27, if you tell them that this person are passing this land bill. You see, this land bill, it will really, really, really make people to suffer out here. People will lose their lands. And this one is will be a form of people trying to grab people's land. Because the cabinet secretary will be having the authority to recall the title deeds. So what does that tell you? These people are out here, they are crafting they're crafting a plan to grab people's land and it will happen it will happen if this thing goes through it will happen just watch the space so as a people we need to bring like what's our agendas what are the things that this government is doing we highlight them this 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 and this so as we are fighting we know we are fighting for this this and this and then how do we need as a as a what do you call it? As a people who are fighting for their rights, what do we, where do we want to be? And where do we seek our country, Kenya, in a few years' time? We had Vision 2030. Even I don't think even that something will, will be actualized. It will still remain as a dream. Because I think even you have deviated from that. that. That was the plan of Kibaki. I don't think even we'll continue with that. I don't see a scenario where, for example, though this time a batch of fertilizers came from Ethiopia. And then at the same time, it happened that during the floods, uh, it, it led to a certain bridge on the Lamu Road towards Gariseni. You could see Murkomen going to Lamu Port once in a while. The essence is because they need this, uh, what do you call these fertilizers of Ethiopians to go to Ethiopians. Why should in the same, same energy? come when you need to serve your people of Kenya? Or is it always because of other countries? They were so, they responded so swiftly and quick because of the benefit of another country. Mbona is this other fertilizer, Mbona is Kenya. Why when it comes to other countries donating fertilizers to Kenya, in Ibiwa, you don't know even how it traces, and then it's scandal after scandal, they're benefiting themselves. No, no, no. At this point as a country, we need to change the narrative of that leaders are just there to come to loot and all that to benefit themselves. We need to change a narrative. And one of the things is because we have made elections also expensive. So these people, they come, they form just like a, a group of people who come together, they fund each other. And then when they get to power, they benefit. Actually, all these cabinet secretaries are as a result of the part they played in the last election. That's why they, they are looting right, left and center and they don't care. Because also the Ruto also knows I'll get my share, they'll get their share. No, no, no. This outgoing president, we must ensure he goes. And I'll end with saying Ruto must go. Thank you. I think our hosts are having issues with, uh, with the speakers. Afro and Kirote, if you can hear us, so we can be allowing uh, different people to speak. And can you hear me? Yes, 